Well, I'm sure you were horrified as I was whenever you saw that explosion in Beirut in August 2021 uh, that killed so many people and destroyed so much property due to the sympathetic detonation of ammonium nitrate. The ammonium nitrate had been stored incorrectly and had got contaminated with dust and dirt and alongside had been unfortunately stored near uh, some fireworks and when the fireworks of course detonated along with the hot temperature of the fire uh, that led to a, a chain reaction which basically allowed the ammonium nitrate to explode and I'm going to demonstrate that in very 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 small scale uh, just after this. But again I'm back to my old chemistry set here as you can see uh, I've got uh, my Merit 1962 chemistry set that in the last video I showed you uh, me unwrapping it and the only really exciting chemical that we discovered in it was potassium permanganate which of course is a strong oxidizer. I'm sure the chap uh, on the front of this cover, he's looking rather glum, would be a bit more excited if he knew that from his experiment he could actually make ammonium nitrate. Because the chemicals contained within this chemistry set, as even within my smaller Salter's chemistry set, contains uh, enough chemicals to make a minuscule amount of ammonium nitrate. So we're not going to do anything that's going to cause anyone any danger or for anyone to be concerned about. Uh, but just for scientific purposes, I want to demonstrate that it is possible to produce ammonium nitrate and nitric acid from the chemicals that are found in a common chemistry set. One of them we have here is ammonium chloride. And if we mix the ammonium chloride with some slaked lime, which is a calcium hydroxide, we'll get ammonia gas. And if we take that ammonia gas and we dissolve it in water, we'll eventually get a saturated solution of ammonia. Now, if we were to take the uh, ammonia gas and we were to oxidize it using a catalyst such as platinum, uh, which of course they don't provide in the chemistry set, but they provide uh, a transition metal a salt called manganese sulfate. And if we mix that with uh, some sodium carbonate, which is also provided, we'll get some manganese carbonate. We can filter that, we can reduce it down in a hot test tube at red heat and it will begin to oxidize in the air and form manganese dioxide. And using manganese dioxide, mixing it with oxygen and ammonia, we can oxidize the ammonia uh, into nitric acid and also then neutralize that with ammonia to form ammonium nitrate. And that's what we're going to do in just one wee moment. Now the first method of making manganese dioxide is to simply take our manganese sulfate, dissolve it in water, along with our sodium carbonate, mix them together and you get a gelatinous precipitate of manganese carbonate. And if that's oxidized by the air, uh, we'll eventually get manganese dioxide. And here you see some glass wool, which I'm simply coating in some manganese dioxide, which could have been simply made by roasting the manganese carbonate in a glass test tube to red heat. And that will go into our reaction catalyst chamber. And so here's a little uh, short video of just the setup itself, and I'm going to explain exactly what's happening. Now, just to show you how simple and easy it is to make ammonium nitrate uh, or nitric acid out of a little chemistry set, I'm going to just give you a quick tour of the very simple apparatus I've got here. We've got saturated ammonia solution in this test tube. It's got a side arm onto it. And the air is being sucked down by the filter uh, pump uh, through the ammonia. It will take with it oxygen and ammonia 
go into this reaction chamber, which is basically a boiling tube with uh, a cork in it with two uh, holes in it. The ammonia and oxygen will pass over the manganese dioxide, which will be heated up to red heat. As you can see, we've, we've already done that previously. And then the NOx, as in the nitrous oxides, uh, will pass uh, in through this tube into the water. And we've got an indicator in the actual experiment to show what's going on, whether it turns from alkali to acid. And that really, that test tube would contain, after the experiment, a mixture of nitric acid uh, and also uh, ammonium nitrate. And so let's run the experiment. Now here in the catalytic chamber we've got um, some manganese dioxide as you saw that was being coated onto some glass wool. Uh, I'm heating it strongly with a Boston burner to red heat and in through uh, this test tube which hasn't got the side arm yet which will suck in through the oxygen. We've got a suction pump onto the end here you can see I've got some indicator into there it's just very simple uh, water suction pump and it's drawing uh, all the gases in through all the reactants and through the reaction chamber. So whenever I put this little cork in, it's of course going to start uh, sucking in air in through the ammonium uh, solution and that will draw it into the uh, reaction chamber. Now before of course there's any reaction, we may well get a, a colour change here in the indicator but actually what I'm seeing there, and I'm sure you saw it too, was a cloudiness that's already appearing in that which shows it's already being oxidised uh, into uh, ammonium nitrate and uh, nitrous oxide gases and that will be dissolving uh, in that uh, ladder tube there. And so later on I just performed the same experiment over again but this time dissolved all the gases without indicators into some distilled water and then evaporated it down. And so I'm going to just demonstrate what would happen if ammonium nitrate was heated up uh, fairly vigorously at red heat. I've got the Bunsen burner here firing away and about half a teaspoonful of ammonium nitrate in uh, a boiling tube. And we're just going to watch and see whether uh, there will be any uh, molecular collapse, will there be an explosion, will there be a massive release of gases. So just watch this and see what happens. And if you just watch very carefully, I've slowed the whole event down. So if you just watch very carefully what happens. Three, two, one. Thankfully, that's not what actually happened. But I did slow the process down. Watch carefully. A very disappointing pop. And so back to our original experiment. Did we or did we not make ammonium nitrate or at the very least nitric acid from the catalytic oxidation of ammonia using manganese dioxide? So I began hunting through my very large collection of indicators to see whether we could do a colometric test and there are several tests that we could do to find out whether there is the nitrate ion in the uh, solution. But unfortunately, I don't think I had any nitron throughout all my many, many indicators. So we're going to have to use uh, another couple of colometric, uh, very simple tests to see whether there is any nitrate in that solution that we hopefully have produced either nitric acid or ammonium nitrate. So one way of doing that is a colorimetric test. It's very, very simple. It's called, and don't laugh, the brown ring test. Uh, so we're going to take uh, a portion of our solution, which should contain nitric acid stroke ammonium nitrate, and we're going to dissolve um, some iron sulfate uh, into that, uh, some furous sulfate. Uh, and then we're going to add very slowly down the side of the test tube some uh, sulfuric acid, concentrated sulfuric acid. And within that reaction, you'll get either a brown ring or if there's a very, very small amount of uh, nitrate, you'll get a purple coloration. So there's the furous sulfate dissolved in the ammonium nitrate solution, all being well. And we're going to just carefully down the side of the test tube add our concentrated sulfuric acid. 
and we'll see what happens, whether we get a brown ring or some form of purple ring or coloration there. And yes, we do. Which just from the very outset shows that there is indeed uh, nitrous products in that test tube. Now another very, very simple test is to simply use concentrated sulfuric acid on the reduced or crystallised down nitrate and then to add some copper. And it's a very, very simple reaction because nitric acid, of course, used to be manufactured from nitrates being mixed with uh, sulfuric acid, concentrated sulfuric acid and heated up, distilled. And of course, as we all know, if you add concentrated nitric acid to copper, you get copious amounts of nitrogen dioxide gas. And there we have it. We have that brown coloration of nitrogen dioxide. And of course, that was the, the colour of the, the huge cloud from the explosion in Beirut. Uh, caused by the uh, decomposition of the ammonium nitrate when it exploded. Uh, very, very, very toxic gas indeed. Uh, and for anyone who wasn't killed by the explosion would certainly have been harmed by the gas itself. And so we had conclusive proof that we were able to indeed synthesise a small amount of ammonium nitrate using ammonium chloride and slake lime and manganese uh, sulphate. Uh, and sodium carbonate out of the chemicals that were in these small tubes from our merit chemistry set. Now, of course, um, ammonium nitrate uh, is a substance that uh, should be treated with great respect and care. Uh, thankfully, we're not able to make any dangerous quantities or any quantities that could be used for any benevolent purposes out of a small chemistry set. But it does just show that if you use simple chemical principles, and scientific research, you actually can uh, turn a chemistry set into something maybe a little bit more interesting than it was designed for originally. Now, um, I did say that this particular chemistry set contained one of my favourite chemicals, potassium permanganate. And I think that's what we're going to look at in the next series of videos. So thanks for watching. Uh, please do like and subscribe. And as I said, if I get up to 2000 subscribers, we will open a big bottle of oleum to celebrate. So thanks for watching. And now I'm going to play you out with a little impromptu that I composed myself. <laughs>